Hey, I'm Inez Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com. Today I will be talking about how to add cinematic movement onto your shot using Adobe Premiere Pro. It's a very, very simple technique. It's specifically designed for beginners or people that are not um, very active in the video editing industry. A lot of my subscribers will, of course, already know how to do this. It's very, very simple. Um, but this is designed for people that shoot on a tripod or shoot handheld, but they don't have a lot of movement going on. And you just want to add a little bit more movement onto your shot to make it look more dynamic, more cinematic, and of course, uh, more professional. Camera movement actually helps to tell your story. So the, the different kind of movements that you add into your shot, they help to bring in your audience to take their attention and to just tell your story a little bit better. So movements are very important. Of course, sometimes you want to go for still movement, um, but in my opinion, if you're shooting on a tripod and there's not much going on in your scene, uh, like there is no people passing by or cars driving by, it's just going to look like a static image, like a photograph. So to fine tune that a little bit, to make it a little bit more dynamic, we're going to add a little bit of movement in Adobe Premiere Pro. Of course, there are a lot of tools to help with that. You can go and use like dollies and gimbals and all these stuff. Sliders are also very popular. Um, but this is also, again, for people that are on a lower budget and only have a camera available and maybe a tripod that they can use uh, to shoot their scene. And then I would recommend to sometimes do the movements afterwards or go to some videos like tips and tricks on how to actually fake some uh, slider effects with your camera, which I'm going to do very soon, by the way. I'm going to do like a hex video so you can go and do fun movements with your camera with no budget. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into Premiere Pro. I have prepared uh, three uh, video files, which you can download in the description if you want to. Uh, so you can follow along with the same footage. Okay, so here we go. All right, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have prepared these files, very simple, uh, just in my street and my garden. Um, but I just wanted to have static um, yeah, files on a tripod. So as you, as you can see right here, there is absolutely no movement going on except for these bikers in the background. But let's say like there is no movement at all. And what I like to do is here, we are actually focusing in the center of our shot. For example, let's say we have a subject over here and it will be a lot better if you center something with a subject right here. So for example, uh, right here in front of the camera, you would have someone just standing in front of the lens. What you could do is to change the staticness. And of course, like, as I said, these things are extremely simple. And even if you know how to do these, sometimes you might not think of it to actually add some movement in there to make it look a little bit better. So we'll drag this into a new sequence right here. Well, what I will do is select it and go to my effects controls. And right here at the beginning, we'll just click a stopwatch for the scale right here. And I'll go all the way till the end of my timeline and just enter something like 110. And it really depends on the time. So like what I would do is like, every second we would go up like one for example so this is going to add a very subtle movement as you can see this is not exaggerated but it's going to add some movement into your scene so it would be a lot better if there is someone standing in front of the lens because currently there is this is just a very boring scene the only reason why is because there is nothing going on absolutely nothing uh, nothing so it's not all about the person that's actually filming that uh, that has a skill on, on making something beautiful it's also what he's actually shooting that is going to make your scene interesting or not so these are things that I didn't know at the beginning I thought if my video clip was boring and bad it's because I sucked at, at making a movie but it's just the location that wasn't perfect of course if you're a good filmmaker you can turn a bad location into a much better location. But then again, it really depends on every situation and we're actually going off track of the tutorial. So we're actually using some scale in here to add some movement. Of course, you can go and increase this number. Like you can, instead of 110, you can go 150, but this is going to be a little bit too much. Like, as you can see right here, now we create a digital zoom, which looks very fake. And it looks like an amateur has done this. So this is something that I wouldn't advise to uh, keep your uh, scaling to a minimal, just add as few as you can. So um, yeah, that's just a single, well, one tip that I can give you. Let's say you want to switch it around, you want to scale out, uh, you can switch up these keyframes right here and like maybe 
zoom out a little bit, which is also really cool. And this is going to be interesting if you have like an overview shot, an establishing shot, you zoom in, you reveal the scene and, and that's something like you can just like, it's revealing the scene and if you would zoom in, it's actually dragging you in, like if there is something bad going on and you see like um, a chest full of coins, you're going to zoom in because you're dragging into that chest, you're seeing that chest, but if you'll have like a very mis mysterious like forest, you're going to zoom out a little bit because that's going to make it look uh, mysterious, it's going to reveal itself. So these are just simple things that I would like to add to this tutorial to actually add a little bit more value to it because I know these things are extremely simple, but everything behind it, all the IDs behind those movements aren't very simple. And yeah, some people might not really think of it. So let's go on to our next scene right here. We have something like this. And of course, uh, again, static. Let's say you're making a movie for, um, yeah, for uh, a commercial for this table, for example. And actually I'm going to, uh, well, of course, the color grading is not for this tutorial. It's actually uh, a pretty, uh, pretty boring image right here. But what I will do is actually zoom in like 110% and then like, um, and then like move it to the left like so and click on the stopwatch at the beginning, go to the end, and then just move it a little bit to uh, to the right. So of course you can do it one frame backwards so you can actually see what you're doing. You can also take your video clip and just hold shift and drag it like so, and just make sure uh, you're not taking it out of frame. So now you have a little bit of movement, but as you can see, it's doing so much to your scene. And by keeping this movement so subtle, it's not going to look like you've actually been shooting this on a tripod and adding the movement later. It actually looks like you have been doing this with a slider. If on the other hand, you would really move it very quickly, you're going to see that your scene is flat and there's no depth going on into your movement. Also, don't add this movement if you have something in the foreground of your camera. For example, if you're filming a scene right here and you have like a plan in, in front of your camera and you're going to do that movement, it's going to notice that, that there is no like depth going on, no parallax effect, and this is going to take you away from uh, this ID. So if you want to have some parallax, I would recommend you doing this with a real slider or using some tricks to uh, fake a camera slider with your camera. So you'll have to do that on the moment itself. But on the other hand, depths really work. I have a tutorial on that as well. So a few tips on how to improve the quality of your video. I will put a card uh, on this video. I don't know <laughs> which direction uh, right now, but I will put a card right here that will take you to a video and it's going to talk about uh, how parallax can help to create some depth into your scene, but I'm not going too much into detail. It's a really interesting video if you want to improve your video game very quickly because these are very simple tricks that improve your, uh, your game by a lot. So again, we're revealing this table and the reason the reason why I'm going from left to right is because the entire table is in our shot when it's all the way to, uh, to the right. So again, we are revealing our table uh, with this movement. The other way around, I don't think it would be the same kind of um, effect. So let's say we have something like this. It's going to be like just a shot of a garden and it's not about this table. So moving it to the right is dragging you into the table. And these are just my opinions. These are not rules or something, but I think these movements work better because of, um, yeah, the things that I'm just describing right here. So um, this are, well, so these are some simple techniques. Again, subtle movement, don't scale it up too much. You don't lose too much quality in here. And for example, for the third scene, you can do the same thing. Maybe you can zoom in a little bit more, for example, move the composition a little bit like so and do it again so uh, maybe you want to move up a little bit so uh, you can like drag it down and drag it up and again this is some kind of revealing shot it's very subtle um, yeah, it's, it's basically the same thing as sliding from the left to the right. It's just sliding up right now. Okay, so these are cool things. Uh, we are going to open up our second one again. What I will do is just um, deselect uh, my scale so I can do something different. And also zoom it in like 120, for example. And I'm going to click on the rotation keyframe. What you can also do is rotate it a little bit. And what I want to do is actually start rotation. Well, start with a rotation and then just get it to a linear end. So something like this. And this doesn't really work for these kind of shots. 
uh, I admit it, but um, this is going to work a lot if you have like a top view shot. So if you have a drone shot looking down or if you have um, like these cooking videos that you see a lot on Facebook and um, they have a top view, if you're going to rotate that, it's going to add some more creativity. It's going to look like a more artistic video. It's not really going to help too much with the storytelling, I suppose. Uh, it depends, of course, on each uh, individual video. It's going to add some cinematic movement and I just really like it a lot. If you have a top view that you're going to rotate it. And here in uh, a frontal video, I don't really think that works all the time. It depends on the shot. Maybe in music videos, you can make everything work, um, but for this shot, it doesn't work. So uh, of course you can start combining all these uh, things. Like for example, you want to scale to 130 and at the end 120. You're going to zoom out and you're going to rotate. This can really help. Like right here, you're already seeing that this shot looks so much more dynamic, so much more cinematic. And it's just a very simple shot in my opinion. And of course, all these techniques, they're not just for video to improve uh, or to make your video a little bit more dynamic, but sometimes you might want to add a photo in a video editing uh, that you have been doing. And of course, if you have a lot of movement into your um, videos and all of a sudden you show a uh, photo, you want to also add some movement in there and that's going to make it fit a little bit better into your video. So I know it's a very, very simple tutorial. I tried to explain a little bit what's behind these movements and why you would want to use them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, uh, give this video a like and definitely, definitely check out our website. We have so much to offer and it would help to support our channel as well if you go and buy something from our website. But of course, all of this stuff is also very useful. So uh, I'll see you in the next one and goodbye.